Hi, I'm Steve. Welcome to my shop. About a week and a half ago, I attended an event at Mark's Machinery in Fort Smith, Arkansas, and a gentleman named Andy was demonstrating, I believe it's a Shark CNC and also the Powermatic CNC, which is made by Axiom. But Andy had an interesting project on display, and I took that idea as a, as a way to eliminate some of those offcuts and repurposed material in my shop that's too big to throw away and too small to do anything with. And this is what I ended up doing. I made a travel tic-tac-toe game, including the X's and O's in here. And I'm going to show you how I did that. At the end of this video, I'm going to share with you some of my lessons learned and what I would do differently when I make this uh, project in the future. But for now, let's get to making some travel tic-tac-toe games. Enjoy. see that that does slip, slip around before it adheres and I hope I didn't just glue this thing to my table. Put one bead down the center, stopping shy of the ends because I don't want to glue it to my spool board. Raise some accelerator on the opposite side. And using the registration pins, this thing is solidly adhered. Okay, so the, this mahogany actually mills up very nicely. What I like to do while it's still adhered down is take this, uh, this is a 320 grit bristle abrasive brush, and I'm just going to clean up any edges on this. medium CA glue same registration point on the, against that block and on the pins
Well, it should hold securely. Now I've got an issue. Get that thing out of there. works better. and these rare earth magnets into place. These are eighth inch by eighth inch rods. And it just is held in place by friction. Yeah, the easiest way to make sure that you've got this set up correctly, the polarities separate these, connect the magnets and then I'm just going to take this, make sure my grains align the way I want it and I'm just going to gently press this together and pull my lid off and make sure that these are seated. All the way. And it's better to have them just a little recessed than sitting proud because this way the lid will close and stay on. How come it didn't do that many on the first one? It did. Oh, it did? Yeah. No, we're going to print them all out and then try them. <laughs> no, we, we did one in paper <laughs> to make sure that it was Yeah, the fit on paper was great. Yeah. Before you hit the unload map button, what we want to check is, it done? is to make sure that it cut through, which it, it did. did. It did cut so through. You can... So bend the mat away from the material. We cut that on the Cricut and it worked great. I'm going to uh, line these. Well, one thing to check before you do that, uh, make sure you got enough room there and that the box will close with the felt in place. This uh, oak here, I had an awful lot of chip out and uh, on this one, and so I ended up sanding this before I put the magnets in. But if I put the felt in here, this box will not close completely. So if you do this, watch out for that. So I'll just pull that out. This is square, so orientation doesn't really matter. And I'm just going to put it back in that corner drop it in place and just press it down. So
So that's a completed tic-tac-toe box. The magnets will hold the lid in place, yet easily removed. So these are some of the results that I've got. Uh, this is, uh, these three are red oak. I'm still waiting on some more rare earth magnets. Uh, but in the future, what, what changes will I learn? First of all, for future boxes like this, I'm, I'm not fond of the red oak. And I, I may try the red oak, but I'll use a different bit. When I milled this out, I used a spiral upcut bit. And I'll, I'll flash a picture up on screen now, but you'll see there's just a bunch of ragged edges on around every pocket that I milled around. And it's actually down here around this rabbit in the base, too. I, everything sanded out nice except this part right here. And that was difficult to get to. So I did it as good I could, as I could. But if I run my finger across it, I can feel that it's kind of rough. And if I put the top and bottom together and hold that up to the camera, I don't know whether it will show that but you can see where there's some chip out on both the top and the bottom don't use a spiral up cut when I change to the walnut I don't know though it could have been a combination of the material change or one one change individually but I went to a spiral down cut bit with this bur walnut burl and I didn't even have to sand this at all it came out quite smooth I will leave a picture of the way it came off uh, came off the uh, CNC machine but it, the downcut spiral like you know I'd, I'd always heard that oh yeah that'll pack sawdust down in your uh, in your in your pockets and you know cause a fire hazard and all that stuff but it my dust extraction worked extremely well on it it only left some pockets of sawdust and in, in um, down around these lower corners for some reason it just kind of left it there as far as the the burl especially for burls look for defects and I knew this had defects you can maybe able to see it right here there's a crack there and a crack there They're book match cracks but you can also see that they transmit through at least this one does on the opposite side I should have filled those and repaired those defects before I milled the, milled the uh, box. Let me see how I'll find I think it's this one. Dump these out. But you can see right here that that crack, that defect fits fine on the outside. You know, I used uh, Starbond uh, black CA glue with the accelerator. And, and it worked out pretty well, but through here it bled through in the bottom and I ended up using a dowel with some 3M stick it paper and it, it cleaned it up nicely. Now let's go to the X's and O's. These X's and O's, I was kind of surprised how well the red oak milled or machined on this. I learned that I left I did a, an array tool path and left a gap of 3.2 millimeters between every X and O. And I was a little off on my stop setting because these were too small to use my new Fritz and Franz jig. So I went back to the old one, which does not have a micro adjust. So this was difficult to get dialed in. It's amazing. I was 0.3 millimeters off on the setting and it was visible to my eye. So what would I do in the future? I took take more care on setting that stop block up on the very first ones as opposed to figuring out in the middle. But to compensate for that, I think in the future what I would do, the O's and the X's, these are milled two millimeters deep. The chamfers around around this, which was milled on the line, this was a I used a V 90 degree V bit and just traced a box around that the width of the material. I only want one millimeter of deep there because I didn't want to interfere with the X. As a result, 
I don't have as good a chamfer as what I would like. I think I would go back and make that a two millimeter depth of cut for the chamfer and make the X's and O's smaller. As far as holding the box material down, the contact paper worked real good. I mean, it held all pieces securely without uh, leaving tabs, and I, I didn't really want to leave a tab there. I wanted as close to a final finish cut as I could get. This I would make, I had to make two passes on this to get it because it fit way too tightly. And I also made a relief cut on this side so I could grab it. I would, um, I would put a relief cut on the other side because getting this out did become a chore. Uh, it, do you have to be exactly centered on this? No, I don't think anybody noticed. So I could have made this relief cut or the, this pocket cut just a little smaller for this inside recess. And I think it would have uh, actually been a lot easier to get the material in and out. And I'd also provide a larger relief cut on the out, on this side, just like I did there. You could make it a little larger too, it doesn't really matter. Clamping system worked pretty good. Okay, so the only question I have left, and maybe you can help me with this. This material was an offcut from another project. So now I have an offcut of an offcut, and I'm really having a hard time deciding whether should I keep these sections and make something with it or not. Let me know what you would make or whether you would just burn this. <laughs> I don't know the answer. I'm having a hard time getting to the burn, burn part, but let me know what you think, and if you got any ideas, throw them out there. I'd love to hear them. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.